have a look at this conversation. Can you identify some errors in it? Would you like to see a movie tonight? Sure, what's playing? How about the new Shah Rukh Khan movie? Or Shah Rukh Khan's movie? I am really exciting to see his movies. Let's go. I am interested in watching the movie too. It's actually based on a book, right? Yes, the book was a little bored, but I heard the movie is fascinated. Well, it has to be. Would you like to see a movie tonight? Sure, what's playing? How about the new Shah Rukh Khan movie? Oh, Shah Rukh Khan's movie. I'm really excited to see his movies. Let's go. I am interested in watching the movie too. It's actually based on a book, right? Yes, the book was a little boring, but I heard the movie is fascinating. I know it can be confusing for English learners to understand when to use ing or ed for certain words like interesting, interested, boring, bored, shocking, shocked. Well, not to worry. Hello, I'm your English teacher Suresh. I am here to help you understand when to use ed and ing. We call these ing and ed adjectives or present or past participles as adjectives. Listen carefully. When we describe feeling or emotion, we use ed like you are sitting in the classroom and the class is making you sleepy. You can say I am bored by the class. But when you describe something or someone without talking about their feeling, in other words, what is that causing you a certain feeling like in the previous example, the class is making you sleepy and you can describe it as the class is boring because the class doesn't have any feeling. In the conversation, I am excited to see Shah Rukh Khan's movies. It's a feeling here. You can say his movies are exciting, but when you describe feeling, excited and describe something exciting. Let's look at another example. You heard news that many people died in an accident. Do you say the news is shocking or shocked? Well, you are right. It is shocking because you are describing the accident or the news. How do you describe your feeling when you heard the news? I'm shocking or shocked? Well, you're right. I am shocked. Let's look at one more complex example. After that, I'll give you a few exercises. The teacher is teaching a concept, but you're not able to understand clearly. Do you say I am a little confused or confusing? Here it's your feeling. So I am a little confused. What about the class? Which is making you confused? Well, the class doesn't have any feeling. So the class is confusing. You can describe people using ing as well when you don't talk about the feeling like Shah Rukh Khan is an interesting actor. You can't say Shah Rukh Khan is an interested actor because we are not talking about his feeling. We are describing what kind of actor he is. Now let me check how much you have understood with a small quiz. Number one, it is so frustrating or frustrated that I can't get good IELTS band score though I tried three times. It should be frustrating here because you are saying it is. I mean, your weight is frustrating. No feeling here. If you want to describe frustrated, you say, I am frustrated. How many times should I take IELTS? Number two, Sarah lost her friend in an accident. So she is depressing or depressed. Here the answer is depressed because you are describing her feeling. You can say the death of her friend is 
depressing because that is what caused her depression. Number three, it was a long journey. We are really exhausting or exhausted. Again, you are describing how you're feeling. So you can say exhausted here. If you want to use ing, you can say the journey was exhausting. The journey was exhausting and we are exhausted. Number four, the score in my test is disappointing or disappointed? Well, it is disappointing because you're talking about the score. If you're talking about the feeling, you will say I am disappointed by the score. Number five, the street was disgusting or disgusted? It's disgusting because you know now it's not a feeling, it's a street. How can you say disgusted? You can say I was disgusted while I was walking on the street. Now I'm going to show you a story. I'll give you words which need ing or ed which means they don't have ing or ed and you need to put them in the correct place in the story have a look at it well these are the words amaze annoy confuse disgust embarrass shock please add ing or ed for these here is the story it was a bad experience at the theater last night first it was the price of the ticket which was very expensive. I was blank by the price. I noticed my shirt was torn in the back and I did not have another one. So I was blank. Then there was garbage all over the theater which was blank. The people next to me were talking during the movie. It was blank. The story was difficult to understand. I need to watch it again to understand because it was blank. I love the music though. It was blank. I will give you some time. Please try to answer. Now let me tell you the answers. It was a bad experience at the theater last night. First, it was the price of the ticket, which was very expensive. I was shocked by the price because you are saying it was very expensive. I noticed my shirt was torn in the back and I did not have another one. So I was embarrassed. Imagine how you would feel when you walk in a torn shirt then there was garbage all over the theater which was disgusting here you are describing the garbage so it was disgusting the people next to me were talking during the movie it was annoying it means they were irritating the story was difficult to understand i need to watch it again to understand because it was confusing because it was not easy to follow. I loved the music though. It was amazing because I love the music. You say amazing. Remember we use ing and ed with certain words but not all. You can't say beautifuling and beautiful. Talling, told. I'm gonna provide you the list of most commonly used ing and ed adjectives now watch till the end meanwhile i'll take a leave thank you for watching goodbye